Well, Pig Talk did a fantastic video on aero handlebars, and he used a, a, a basically a CD measurement, CDA measurement device to be able to work out if aero handlebars were more aero than, say, a standard round hero bars. So they're the ones we get where they're all one piece. The stem and the handlebars are all made in one. So you put them on and you can't change the stem or the handlebars separately. So it's all in one device. Now, what I want to talk about today is that was really great what Peak Talk did and very good, very good research he covered in that video. But the issue is, and he did mention this, but he didn't go into it too much, was the fact that the handlebars need to be able to get your body into an aero position because what you've got is you've got the handlebars in combination with the whole bike and the body that gives you the optimum aero. So if you have some drag coming off the handlebars and that partially negates the drag of your body, then the overall drag may actually be better than if you had a rand handlebar because it's like has a tripping system. And that's what the ribble handlebars have. They have like a little bit in the middle, which is a tripping device. And they say that this gives you more aero or CDA overall. And this is true. So let's roll that intro and let's have a bit of a talk about what is the problem with these aero bars even though now we know that they can make you more aero if you want to go that way. Well, the issue is, is about getting the handlebars in the first place, getting the handlebars that fit you. Now, let's just say you're an experienced guy, you've got a set with, you've got a favorite handlebar. Now, you can go and pick one of the sizes. Now, generally, most of the brands are doing about 16 different handlebars. So you've got four different widths of sizes and you have four stem lengths. So you can kind of get in the ballpark, but what you can't change is the type of curvature, the amount of drop they have. So when you're in the in the drops, that may not be the same as your favorite handlebar you have now. It may actually be less or it may actually be more. And that may actually make it more uh, uncomfortable for you to ride or it may take you out of your optimum aero position. So that is an issue because you can't tilt the handlebars, you can't adjust them up and down, you can't turn the handlebar over, you can't get a different degree because the design of the handlebars is exactly the same. It's just that they vary in width and they vary in length. The angle and the, the drop curvature stays exactly the same. So we need to be really careful when we say aero handlebars are aero. In Pete Talk's situation, he said they could be, and, and everything being equal, if he was a smaller person, he may have a net gain. But that is like that everything shrunk down equally. If it's not, and you're a different ratio of person to your legs, to your body, to whatever, to your arms and all that sort of stuff, then you might be sitting up a bit higher or sitting up a bit lower and you might not feel comfortable in the drops with that set of handlebars. And the other problem is if you buy them and you try them, these things are really expensive. Now, from what I can gather, these things are usually around about $1,000 Aussie or they could be more. They're very, very expensive. It's not just like buying a handle, going to a shop, put, trying on a handlebar, have it for like a couple of weeks and you come back and then the bike can just change it out. The bike shops don't stock them because of the price because they're very, very expensive. So if you just say you had the whole collection from one brand that you sell in your shop, then you would have $16,000 worth of kit sitting in the shop. And if you sold a number of different brands, then of course that's going to be multiplied by that $16,000 by the amount of brands you sell. So you might have three brands in the shop. So that's 16,000, 32,000. <coughs> and what's my maths there? 32. So that's 48. So you could have $48,000 tied up just in handlebars. And a lot of shops don't want to carry that sort of 
kit in the in the shop. And the thing is, as well as if a new bike comes out next year, they could change that integrated handlebars because they've changed the design of bike and, and these aren't staying the same because they're proprietary. So that is the huge negative with aero handlebars. Even though they're aero, depending on the person and the way the person fits the bike and fits the handlebars, the limiting factor of the handlebars could actually make you less aero because they don't give you the same drop or they don't get you into the same position that you can get into if you just buy a stem with a, a different negative uh, or positive angle on it and your, your favorite handlebars that you've worked out over the years. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. So even though Peak Talk did a fantastic video and I would recommend you 100% to check it out, Peak Talk does some excellent stuff and is using this new CDA device, which is really interesting. I hope he does a video specifically just on that device because these things are not that common and it would be really interesting to know a little bit more about them. But anyway, guys, in his case, he got a, a net gain, but that may not be the case with you or the handlebars. You may actually get more of a gain or you actually might, more, might have a negative gain. Well, that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys, and I'll see you next vid.